Hey there, listener. Welcome to the Deep Share Podcast. I'm your host, Andy Rouse, and for the last couple of decades, I've slowly been opening my eyes to a very different world than the one I grew up hearing about. And the more conversations I have with interesting people, the more mystifying this world becomes. So without further ado, let's get deep. We've got science to celebrate! Demons bliss out! After what, baby? Come on! There is a rebellion in the wind. It will be crushed. Everything I've said is true, it's real. Dinosaur fossils? I'd like to put those here to test our faith. That damn lie, I, I saw them on my own eye! Did I the cues just drop sharply while I was away? We did it illusions, man! None of it is true! I'm not insane! This is mass madness, you maniac! In God's name, you people are the real thing! We are the illusion! Beautiful. <laughs> really clean up the place too. You know, I try. I just yeah, hopped, this just is... hopped off the piano. <laughs> this is yeah. Narco Longo. Narco it's Longo. This is Dan Unaki. Dan. How's it going, Dan? What's up, Florida man? I'm doing good. <laughs> I'm this recording already. So. Oh, hello. I'll introduce myself, and this is a. Swapcast, I guess, is going to go on everybody's channel. I don't know what the fuck this is. I just got off a three-hour podcast, <laughs> so I've been drinking, and I'm high. So welcome. I'm Juan from the Juan on Juan podcast. You can find me anywhere at the Juan on Juan podcast. And who do I have the lovely pleasure to be speaking to today? Oh, this is Andy Rouse from the Deep Share podcast. And you can find me as well everywhere at the Deep Share or the Deep Share podcast. And I too have done about four hours of podcasting already since 5 p.m. here on the East Coast. So I'm still rearing to go. This is the most, this is the one I've been looking forward to the most. So hell yeah. Dan? Um, Danny Unaki Dan from Rising from the Ashes. And. I just got off work an hour ago, so I have not been podcasting, so I'm fresh. <laughs> and then <laughs> Dr. Narco Longo, the man of the hour. Up, um, how's it going? Narco Longo. Up, Great to meet uh, you, man. Old World Florida on YouTube. The fucking celebrity, yeah. dude. This guy has gone viral. He is a disinfo agent, according to some. He's <laughs> a messiah, according to others. So it's a pleasure to have you. And today we're going to be talking about some Bach saga, Saxer saga, and our hidden history, right? Our occulted history uh, that's going to be way different than the mainstream stuff. So we're here. And I know Narco Longo wanted to say something for about 10 minutes because he had some information that is hasn't been mentioned anywhere else. So this is exclusive information straight from, from the source. About some stuff that you said was groundbreaking that you say you're the only one with. What's up, bro? Well, um, you know, don't let's not make the stakes that high. Uh, <laughs> how about how about you guys tell me when you when you heard about the saga first and how did you get saga? Saxer saga? No, 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 no. Heard... yeah, the oh. Bach, the Bach saga. Sorry. I heard about ago. it from Dan about a year and a half ago. From Dan, I mean, probably more now. And Dan's been talking about it for about two or longer right mm. when, oh, when's dude. your birthday dan why does that matter because <laughs> <laughs> i'm a gemini you're June. a gemini okay yeah. um i got into the box saga probably two and a half years ago if i had to guess and you know, I've been watching your guys' coverage of it a little, and I think you you might even know more than I do about about it. Um, I would say I know more about the Saxer saga. I, I coined yeah. the term Saxer saga. Oh, okay. It, it was never referred to as that um, until I got in contact. I didn't know John then, but when I made the documentary, now I know him. And I just made another video today. It's going to have a little little bit of this info in it. Cool. Um, especially one of these gra graphics that I've made. And I think I'll just have to share my screen a little bit. You know how to do that, right? You've already shared your screen before with me. Yeah, let's see. 
So yeah, check out Old World Florida on YouTube. He's got a great fucking channel. Yeah, and lots of great. He content. goes into he just released the Saxer. He he did an exclusive interview with John Saxer, and he put out a whole documentary. Wow. So I'm excited to watch that. And we have him here. He's a, like I say, he's a local celebrity. He is. He's about to start his own cult too, and he's already bought the compound. So nice. <laughs> we'll be podcasting from there too. Yep. Yeah. Okay, you guys can see my screen. No, you need to share no. it, and I need to put it up on the screen. You did Hold it on. last time. Should be the little screen, this computer screen with the plus sign. You click that, and then it came up. It should come up, and I'll in the waiting room, and I'll bring it up on the screen. You see it? Yeah, it's, Chrome has lost permission to capture your screen. Wow, bro. It's the lizard people. Can you send they it? I don't want it out there. Restart Chrome. If you start Chrome, you're going to have to come back in. You can open two windows. Of course. So, yeah, Saxer Saga has been really intriguing over the past couple of weeks. I've been looking into some of this stuff because uh, Dan and I did an episode, as some know, on, on this and the connections that we just saw at first glance with the box saga. But now that, you know, we have you here, it's, it's going to be interesting if we have more to connect it with. I mean, we're not ever trying to keep the saga as like the center of everything. We're just trying to use it and see where it goes and where it leads. And it seems to be going the distance. So maybe this other part of the story can fill in a lot of the holes. And he said it, it was in the 80s, right? That he came up with it? The box saga? Yeah. Oh, yes. 84. or Well, I think. So I, I hear two dates from very prime sources that knew Eeyore Bach. I hear 84 and I hear 87. So I'm not sure if maybe he started to tell the story. To like his very inner circle in Goa, and then mm -hmm. it started to expand outward, and then he kind of made something out of it in '87. Maybe I, I'm still looking into it. His uh, yeah. his mom died in '84, yeah. and so he got okay. the instructions to go public with it in '84. Mm -hmm. And I don't I don't think he had his first follower until '87. Okay, I think. I mean, because I know he was like telling his friends that he already had first, which was Michelle Merle and a number of others. Sorry, guys. Oh, no worries, man. You want to worst case, you could send it to Juan or me or whatever, and in, in yeah. Dan in the email, we could maybe figure it out. Okay. Yeah, I can bring it up. When are you gonna come yeah, out with me... your saga, Narco Longo? When are you coming up with yours? To share with your followers. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be like the first Hang one. On, I'm, like, I'm too focused. The fucking first follower ever, dude, of the of the the narco native Juan, what's your know. number? Do you have an iPhone? No, dude. No. I have an Android. I don't do iPhone. Dude, that's, that's gay. <laughs> <laughs> come on dude this guy who has a, a one of the biggest youtube channels on youtube and he can't even share a screen yes. okay <clears throat> i'm gonna email you what's your email again the one one podcast at gmail.com and don't send me dick pics or else i'll release narco longo's email and you can send him dick pics <laughs> <laughs> okay let's see if i can do this i believe in you bro did you send it yeah Damn, wait what state are you in andy are you on east coast or west coast bro i'm east coast what I thought yeah. you were in, in Arizona for some reason. 
No, man. <laughs> Couldn't be further away. I'm in Massachusetts. Oh, damn. I told I told this dude, I'm like, well, we're the, we're the East Coast versus the West Coast. We got to represent <laughs> for Florida. And okay, yeah. Well, the East Coast. Hell yeah, man. It's sent. All right, dude. Let's see how good. That's, yeah. Where'd you get your PhD from, bro? Because. <laughs> um, yeah. It's actually a, a, a doctorate in uh, paleontology. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's see what you sent me here, bro. It better not be like nudes or something. It might be. I don't know. It is the box saga. Oh, you sent right? me some dicks, dude. <laughs> <laughs> all right, which one of them all do you want me to freaking open? Um, The one that does it for you. The, the, oh, I like that approach. The one that does which it for me? Does it for Juan. No, <laughs> here, I need, I need to see him. I'll Pick show you dick. the one that does it for me, bro, yeah. right here. <laughs> Hold on. We can just go. You can just show me a picture, and I can. Right there, that's the one that does it for me, right there. Okay, so yeah, right there. So yeah, these, the cat fertility. The the cat. These were found in Marco Island, near Marco Island, on the west southwest coast of Florida, so Gulf of Mexico, and mm. basically part of my theory which is not covered in the box saga is that these Vikings, the Finnish people, the original Vikings who did, did, do not have their own Norse mythology. They have a very small, strange oral mythology. It's not the same as the other Vikings. That's because they are the father of, of all the other Vikings, the Dan and the Sven line, you know, okay. and the, this would be the original people from the North pole. So they, the Finnish people are the Phoenicians. This mm -hmm. is what this is what no one wants to admit. Mm. They're they're the only two people that could cross the open ocean in antiquity, and they were both you know had the the long beards, Bach beards, very often, and they had the wizard hats. So yeah. these guys had Viking boats, and every Viking boat had at least one cat now the cats from the north pole are sphinxes sorry the lynx the lynxes and the sphinx mm -hmm. in egypt is not a lion it's not a lion it is no, a, a bobcat lynx. it's a bobcat it's a lynx and the american mm -hmm. bobcat is virtually identical to the lynx and we have a shit ton of bobcats down here in florida now that up here too. So, so bobcats very often will have those seven toes too, which is kind of the equivalent of these. They're kind of like bobcats are like the Cro Magnon of cats, if if that makes sense. Huh. Mm -hmm. Every other cat in the world is um, domesticated or feral. The bobcat is the original royal cat from Eden from the center of the earth, wherever, you know, the North Pole. And those were brought to Egypt where you have the first domestication of cats. That's not actually true. It's actually Cyprus where you have the first domestication of cats. And on Cyprus, 7,000 years ago, they have the domestication of cats. Well, that's because it was a Phoenician colony. Hmm. Cyprus was. Didn't they find? I just watched this fucking cat video on Netflix last night, and they found a burial of a human with a cat that goes yeah. back to I think around eight thousand yeah. BC to ten thousand. I can't remember the actual date, but it's. I remember yeah. they showed like the later dates after that. It's at least seven thousand, and Juan, that's in the photos that I sent you. That burial. So, no, that's the Florida bog people who who are. <laughs> who line up precisely around there is there any way to look at just like a menu yeah yeah hold on view? sorry on. you're doing the best you can i know so yeah i was uh i watched this cat video last night and it was actually pretty interesting about cats and uh yeah some of the stuff that they talked about was the domestication of cats and i thought it was really interesting because most people don't think about 
for a long time it seems like dogs and cats were like oh whoa where'd they come from you know everybody speculates you know dogs came from wolves and blah 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 but cats nobody really kind of knew exactly where they came from and i do believe that they said on there that they came from an african bobcat it was like a it was a small they said they haven't changed their look in over like a or their dna hasn't changed in over like a thousand years or more and so they're almost identically the same as what they are now and uh it is pretty interesting how they got domesticated they showed pictures of them underneath the chairs in egypt and we we're talking about how they were a sign of ro- ro- royalty and they kept them in the houses and they even speculated which i thought was really fucking interesting and cool that the reason why there was a black plague was because the church went around and killed off all the cats because they're associated with witches and since there was no cats left around to kill all the mice and rats uh there was a higher infestation uh from those animals and it caused the plague (laughs) to happen that's pretty wild yeah that's that's correct for sure (laughs) i think you and i covered that on a deep chill episode Mm -hmm. really that's you brought that up before that's why there was a cat on every viking ship going out of the north pole they had these royal cats to prevent disease to kill the pests and yep mm -hmm. in fact they talked about yeah they talked about they had them on a lot of the ships most of the diseases that came from the old world to the new world that killed all the native supposedly you know not that it happened exactly like that they actually came from the livestock and the rats brought over Mm. from europe not the people because you didn't have this is a conspiracy theory in itself it's always like like 50 europeans show up to a nation of two million and kill a million of them with their diseases but the 50 europeans are they're fine right Mm. they're okay so it is because it's a livestock. They're bringing their livestock over. It wipes out their population. If it was the other way, if they brought alpacas back with them, which they may have, but not to the extent. You get the idea. So that um, cat right there, people say it's a, a cougar because it might have a long tail going up the spine of its back. You can't see its, its tail in that picture. But it's clearly a some type of domesticated cat. Um, cougars don't act like that. Uh, domesticated cats act like that. Mm. Um, so basically, that is evidence of that alone is evidence of some type of um, importation of cats, introduction of cats to South Florida, way way ahead of schedule, basically. Mm whereas they weren't introduced at that point and we know that because all of the maya the aztec all of those kingdoms had no domestic cats they had a shit ton of like jungle cats but no domestic cats um what was this found that sorry it was found i think like 200 years ago oh jeez 150 years ago Mm-hmm. maybe uh, you know 1900 i'm not sure okay. but i think they date it to like 2000 years ago of course yeah. but the, anything they date down here in florida is way off even way off from how bad dating normally is mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. so we could start with uh the florida bog people yeah the guy with the red hair okay so we all know the atlanteans the descriptions of the sea people the atlanteans the phoenicians they all had red hair or blondish hair they had this rh negative gene that preserves uh, recessive genes whereas positive blood and dominant genes override everything and orange this is why orange hair has never uh, gone extinct they always tell us it's going to go extinct Well, orange hair is most common in two people, the Irish and the Scottish and the Celtic in general, and the Jewish, Jewish people, Ashkenazi Mm -hmm. Jewish people, Um, and Vikings and just Nordic people in general as well. But 
basically RH negative blood is goes hand in hand with orange hair and these people that were the some of the earliest inhabitants of Florida who had European or Eurasian they don't like to call it European but it's definitely Eurasian DNA they were they looked like this they're depicted as having strawberry blonde hair and that pretty much only comes from the North Pole mm. so these earliest inhabitants of Florida the 7,000 year old Windover bog people and Manitoa key site bog people that one was in the ocean so you know that it's at least 7,000 years old yeah. because, because the ice age you know this the sea levels had to had to raise for that mm. to be un underwater today so yeah like so that's that. some evidence wow. right there that we had vikings in florida and remember everyone the church doesn't like is a viking or a barbarian or a barbar so, yeah right so right there you have european Devils. people right around the end of the last ice age here in florida and when the europeans got here the colonial europeans got here in the 15 1600s they even called the Tamukua people and some of the people they saw between here and South Carolina, they they called Picts, hmm. like the like mm -hmm. the Picts, like the Picts. Of, yeah. of the I North, just... and they they were tattooed. They were tattooed. They had yeah. blue, they had blue tattoos, and here's a big kicker: the blue tattoo ink that so oh, many of I these am. ancients ancients. The Mayan used it comes from from one spot primarily. That's Atlanta. the west, the west coast of Florida, which is oh. the the blood of the horseshoe crabs that are oh. on the west oh. west coast of Florida. So that oh. that was getting that was a very valuable commodity that was getting transported out of Florida. The Maya were in Florida too, so we'll give them some credit. Yeah. Miami comes from Maya. Mm -hmm. so. yeah i mean have you followed like the i don't know if it's you know solid or not but the amaruka idea that america that's where the name came from instead of vespucci yeah no amerigo vespucci i think columbus was a real person there's a mm -hmm. lot of people that say he wasn't mm -hmm. and if he, if he wasn't that's okay the story's still the same mm -hmm. amerigo vespucci was probably fake uh, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Now, America does more is more likely to come from, and more more likely to come from, uh, Amurica, because it is Moors, the land of the Moors. It was Moorish people. Hmm. Um, these are the Amar dark. Amaru. Amaru is a yeah. shining serpent. Right. So it's all, all right, three. Yeah. It can, it Amaruka, can be, yeah, the Mayan, yeah, all of it, yeah, it basically just ties plumes, it together. The plume plumes ser serpent. serpent is is uh, Jupiter. Now, hmm. there, I said hmm. earlier that the dragon is Neptune. The sea serpent, the sea serpent, is Neptune. Okay. The thunderbird, the lightning bird, the uh, the the you know, the plumed serpent is jupiter he's the eagle so we were mm -hmm. we were touching on the war of the eagle versus the serpent people yeah and this is the two philosophies on how the controllers decide to steer humanity where it's it's the being more transparent with the occult and pagan mysteries and sex and drugs and stuff like that being more open with it that's the neptune side neptune is the god of thank the, you the planet of the the subconscious, the unconscious, the uh, these are the the more symbolic minded rulers, mm. and then you have the eagle cult, the eagle faction, and those are typically the the war powers, like Nazi Germany, Rome. So, do, uh, 
So do you think of yeah. the Maya were like a hybrid of, of both the, the Eagle and the serpent cults? Could, and that's why they're the plume so, serpents because they're so, like a combination of the Eagle and, and the serpent. I know that in Florida, they had an, a high reverence for Jupiter because we have St. Petersburg and Peter is Jupiter. So St. Petersburg mm-hmm. is Jupiter. That's St. Peter. St. Peter is Jupiter Saint in Father. the sky. It's, yeah. it's the, the first Pope after Jesus and Jesus is also Zeus. So it's Jupiter is Zeus, same guy. So Peter is Jupiter. Right. Then we have Jupiter, Florida. Mm-hmm. We have we also have Neptune, Florida, which is Neptune Beach. Neptune Beach. And there's also Venus, Florida, because Florida's ruled by Pisces. We we went into that in the last Venus, podcast. Florida, really? Yeah, it's a it's a gay town. You would it's know, like right? A, <laughs> right? Yeah. I did I did my the, I did my the, thesis. You did it there. I knew I was, yeah. I'm pretty sure I've seen you on Grinder before. No, 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 no. <laughs> oh, don't spread I mean, that I'd fake news, bro. His enemies, yeah. his enemies are looking for any dirt they can dig up on this man. This man is is a wanted <laughs> felon on YouTube. He puts out diss tracks, so check that out. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you want to let's take a look at another photo. Yep. Yes, I please. wanted to bring up. Did you guys see the, the, the torso of an Irish man that they found recently? No, a, bo- a bog body. No. I'm not sure if I can bring this up on. No, is this uh, going to be a meme? No, it's not a meme. I promise. I promise you. <laughs> Hold on. I'm trying to find the the article. Uh, though. Also, the reason why I was asking is because uh, that bog man that we looked at the picture of earlier had strawberry blonde hair, and that's kind of like a combination of the bright red and the blonde to get that color. So it, it seems like maybe it could have been like a hybrid of the two. And if they were uh, related before, then there was probably no reason why they weren't interbreeding together anyways, even if they mm-hmm. had different idealisms. I think the Maya... A lot of time, just like you see in Egyptian hieroglyphics, you see black people, white people, and then red people who are, who mm-hmm. are the, um, the people that are the red skins of America. Red skin is not Native American. They're a little red, but they're not that red to be considered red skin. It's the Vikings who came out of the North Pole. 10,000 years ago that had zero sun protection, zero, zero resistance to the sun. So they needed to coat themselves in red ochre when they were especially coming down to Florida where it was very hot. So, and we have red ochre burials in Florida too. And the bog, the bog, the bog burials are those you would expect to see in North Germany. Denmark area and you know southern Scandinavia bog so check this out this is a I thought this was recent but it was in 2003 but I saw an article on my phone that was like oh look recently found but this guy stood 6'6 six, six, yes it, so they're really tall and allegedly where did he they is, find him this was in on Krogan Hill north of Daigini it's it's somewhere over there in and yeah so the irish you know like if you know uh who's that irish fighter that taught um really tall one conor mcgregor no he's not he's not tall tall. (laughs) Uh, tyson Tyson fury oh tyson fury yeah he's like what six ten six eight tall hey okay so the irish one segment of the the irish people that are descended from the sven line are tall as shit and (laughs) the vikings the sven line are all super super tall Mm. um the dan line didn't get as much of those tall genetics the dan the dan line was more corrupted if you know the box saga they're the war people and this the the sven line is more of the the serpent people the neptunians that are more interested in the occult rights 
and bringing them to the mm. public and not not hiding it all for themselves so these are the irish the welsh the scottish the people that are were subjugated by the germans i'm german and i'm irish so it's i don't have a bias against either but um you're mayan yeah the, so <laughs> to, to tie it back in the maya i think they were dark-skinned to be honest because mm -hmm. of the way that their their heads and uh, faces are shaped and you have the olmec not very far who are definitely um like polynesian people mm -hmm. and so yeah, it's really weird that they literally look not from the, that area they look very yeah. so very asian right like mm -hmm. friggin it's wild yeah so here well, let's sorry the native americans are from asia right they are the most of the northern native americans are not native americans as far as if we go back very far the, the plains indians and like the native americans we think of when we think of indian on tv like cowboys versus indians those natives are mongolian hordes mongolian hordes that's why mm -hmm. they were um they have Asian DNA. They did come across the Bering Strait, but mm -hmm. they were literally like Genghis Khan type peoples. And I think the horse has always been in America, just like just like I think the camel was always in Australia. Australia has the most camels in the world today. Oh wow! But, yeah. but didn't native. they populate? Yeah, didn't they populate Australia with a bunch of crazy that's, animals? That's what they say. But I'm, but you know, I also that think sounds that, like a psyop anyway. <laughs> I think that the trees, I think that the trees are, are even, they lie about the trees here. So I think that they'd lie about anything. So, hmm. so let's well, look at another. Which picture? Uh, the Gulf Stream. That's another good connection to make. So mm -hmm. in the Bach, in yeah. the Bach saga, you have basically the the whole theory basically uh, hinges on the fact that there was this Gulf Stream that kept the Baltic uh, Sea alive, the, the port of Helsinki or whatever whatever they call it, the uh, the Gulf the Gulf of Finland, the Gulf yeah, of Finland. Gulf of Finland. Yeah. So the Gulf the Gulf of Finland was kept warm and it was thawed out through the ice age by this water that comes where does it come from it comes from florida <laughs> so basically if i were those sea people and i was leaving the north pole at the end of an ice age i would where would i go i would be following that warm water out because that's basically probably the only route you could take at that point if it was all ice that warm water you would follow that warm water like a highway to its source mm -hmm. and if you if you're freezing and you know everyone wants to be in warm comfortable weather why would they just stop at newfoundland why would they just stop in pennsylvania because they have those rune stones in pennsylvania and ohio the rune stones that have runes ancient runes they know it it's not a conspiracy theory so they wouldn't just stop you would keep going as the weather got nicer and nicer and that's what they did they came down to south florida and they established a pyramid building society now the florida mounds are older than most of the mounds in america you also have the bog people that we were just talking about had the most sophisticated textile in all of the Americas for that time period, 7,000 years ago. They had textile that was thousands of years more advanced than the people they were living side by side with. Hmm. So that tells you right there, someone made it from Europe to Florida. And I think it was part of this, this box saga. So well, it makes sense to the lines. Oak Island, the Oak Island stuff and uh, the Oak Logs 
that were placed in there uh, because of the Vikings had a strong connection to Oak in the mythology. Mm -hmm. And then even Nova Scotia, uh, they talk about uh, Templars being there, which I think the Templars were a part of the same line. uh, And they were kind of like a rebellion that was kind of going under, Mm -hmm. under the guise so they could retrieve some of the articles that were left in uh, these temples. Yes. Now you, I want to touch on Oak because did you know that Florida, you know, I'm not just some like narcissistic Florida maniac that always tries to tie everything (laughs) back into Florida, but this is true. Florida has the oldest Oak trees. Sorry, I shouldn't have said it like that. Florida has older Oak trees than anywhere in Europe. Is that not wow. insane? That blew my fucking mind when I first heard that. It was on oh, one sorry. of your videos. Oak, I was like, oak trees. And we have a ton of 2,000-year-old oak trees in Florida still. So Yeah. I, I think so, this area right here on the map that's all dotted in red where Cuba is and everything and the, the, the peninsula there that connects to South America, I think that was all land at some point. And even um, Florida was a, a bit wider. It Maybe was. even that whole coastline came all the way up through where that yellow line is. So if you watch my, my current the video I just posted today, the sacks or stones, uh, I interviewed two guys that were on the AquaQuest team that were diving, looking for Atlantis in the Bahamas with Edgar Cayce's yeah. uh, foundation. And I noticed that they, they found pyramids. This is no bullshit. No... I put video in there of them researching the pyramids. They found a 300 foot cliff that had man-made openings and switchbacks etched into it. I didn't have any pictures of it. They had to sign non uh, non-disclosure waivers and stuff. Whoa. But um they found it you know, it's all in there in the AquaQuest part of, of my documentary. But basically, the, the sites that they were finding, they were finding burials and stuff like that. And then we have the Windover sites that I was just talking about. Um, sorry, not the Windover site. The same culture as the Windover site is the Manitoa Key site. And that's the burial that was out in the ocean. So I think it was like 700 yards off the ocean off the beach so you have at least that much of sea level rise hmm. so you know uh, someone was here it was an impact i heard wasn't isn't there something about an impact taking out the gulf of mexico some people say the dry is yeah because well, the gulf it? of mexico is so shallow and mm-hmm. it's so um flat there's no like crest in the middle there's no extreme depth that people think that it has to be a meteor crater i don't believe that i think it's just probably terraformed because florida Mm. is only two flat places in the world with the exception of the salt salt fields and wherever it is i don't know bolivia salt the salt flats yeah, those things are crazy. With the exception of that place, there's two completely flat places in the world, land masses. The Giza um, Plateau. Sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Finish. The Giza Plateau and Florida. So hmm. if you were building a garden, number one, that they had to level the entire Giza Plateau in order to build the pyramids on it. That's, the, that's what's more impressive than the pyramids themselves is that they leveled the entire plateau to have a perfectly level foundation. Now, Florida, I think, was terraformed the same way. Why does Florida have so many um, springs? It has the highest concentration of freshwater springs on the planet. Mm -hmm. That's That's because most springs come up out of the tops of mountains and come down. Florida has had its mountains sawed straight off Therefore, you have like a limb, like a cut off limb that's just oozing, profusing blood like crazy 
that's the spring water situation in Florida, where you have, I think it's freshly terraformed land, or not, maybe not freshly, but terraformed to the point where it's completely flat on purpose because they wanted to have a garden, basically. You know, yeah. you don't, you don't want to, I think Florida is a garden. It's kind of like a, it was a recreational zone. It was more of like a, where the royalty would have vacationed just like they, they do today. And Saxer believes it to be the, the main port of Atlantis and where they exported all their produce from. Hmm. So F Florida also has some of the earliest corn um, harvesting mm -hmm. or corn evidence of corn. And it's this one isolated town in the central in central Florida. So that right there is tells you a little bit that it might be to do with the box saga because hmm. and the box saga doesn't own this information that you know, it, it's the same, the same story of the Aryan diffusions or the the Atlantean people, the sea people that come from somewhere else and right. ch change society. So you have this uh, Flor Florida had some of the earliest agriculture in America too. And that's Hey want So sorry, go ahead. No, I'm all that's all. Uh, hey Juan, go back to that map real quick again. Uh, because uh, you were talking earlier about those those big stones that were found in Florida with a hole in them. Um, mm -hmm. I, I was watching an Atlantis video, the the Disney one with uh, um, Simcha Jaco Jacobavici, and uh, they were talking about um, see the like the pillars of Hercules right there at Spain in Africa, and then yeah. there's another little tip that comes out right there. That place was called Donia. And they found a bunch of uh, those same type of big, uh, big rocks with holes in them like that, and they were using them for anchors for the boats, mm -hmm. and um, and so it's almost like the same exact stone. So when I saw a saxer saga, I was like, oh, that looks just like those stones that they were uh, talking about in that video. Mm -hmm. So I've been I've been kind of following like Tribe of Dan and stuff around. Uh, because I've been noticing Dan and and Don uh -huh. and fucking everything, uh, yeah. that's what kind of got me connected into the the box saga in the first place. Was because when Dan came up in there, I was like, "What the fuck? No way!" Like here we go again. And so, Donia, Donia connects uh, into that tribe of Dan stuff, yeah. and then the whole uh, left side of Spain uh, in the Atlantic was all called uh, Celtibaria. Uh, where all the Celts and barbarians went. And I think the Vikings even went to Greenland at some point. So going down to uh, Nova Scotia area wasn't too far from like the tips of Greenland mm -hmm. either. So it, it, it all seems pretty plausible to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we, we uh, you know, we have a lot more to, a lot more convergence points that we're, that we're going to, um, be talking about, but you're absolutely right. You are. Um, they were in Nova Scotia. Nova Scotia means New Scotland. So, you know, right. Newfoundland, yeah. Newfoundland means, you know, the land we just found. <laughs> but, and yeah. they had those runes in Pennsylvania and Ohio, rune stones. And can I, uh, could we look at another picture, Juan, please? So let's look at part of this whole thing is that well, what were they moving out to do? If you could click on like the, one of the pyramid ones, any anyone. This is the Mississippi mound mound culture, right? Because in America, mm. you're only allowed to call them mounds. If you yeah. say if you say if you utter the word pyramid. <laughs> in america you're a laughing stock it's ridiculous oh yeah um that is not inaccurate that is completely what was going on in the mississippi river area and the ohio river valley area now back to, to tie back into the phoenicians the biggest evidence 
for the Phoenicians in America is the fact that all of the copper and tin from mostly copper from the Ohio and Mississippi River areas is missing from the archaeological record. They don't have all the, they know that there were these ancient copper mines, there was a ton of them, but all the copper is missing. They don't have all the copper artifacts. But many of those copper artifacts, this like very well done, um, well crafted, crafted with finesse, and fit finesse is where finish is where the word finesse comes from. Finesse. Just like to polish something is Polish, right? Um, and there's a couple others. But this craftsmanship, <clears throat> and you have the Clovis, Clovis head uh, spear technology, bifacial tool, tool technology in Florida very, very long ago. But this pyramid culture was almost identical in many ways to the Maya culture um, as far as how they orientated their pyramids. They uh, copied the same Maya layout, basically. And we also have mammiform tetrapod pottery in Florida, which only comes from the Maya or mostly comes from the Maya. Mm -hmm. So the Maya were definitely contacted by these Atlantean, you know, 12 tribes, the 10 tribes, the 10 brothers, whatever story you want to look at it from, yeah. that, that went out from the center of the earth and went to the capital cities of the Ringlands. And I believe Florida, if not just the whole Caribbean area, to be one of these hubs where they went. And mm -hmm. I, think, I think that it was a, a primary hub I do believe I agree with John Saxer that it was the belly button of the planet. If if Helsinki's the head, then Florida is the belly button. That's what I believe. Mm -hmm. Because it had some of the tallest trees in the world. It has the most fresh water, spring fresh spring water. It has the ability to grow tropical fruit and traditional agriculture, grains and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. It's just a very unique place, and it, it seems very artificial. I love it. I love Florida, but it's very artificial. Even today, everything's landscaped, and it seems like it was always meant to be landscaped. It's just mm -hmm. so hot and mucky that it seems like it's in a state of disrepair rather than, I think it was like the Babylonian gardens where humans were very involved in the ecosystem here where we were cleaning stuff up we were ir irrigating and we were uh you know monitoring everything and we just don't we just don't know how to do that today <clears throat> so what so what you're left with is a mosquito infested swamp which it's right. not which it's not as bad as people think if you know like about you don't the... clean out your pool right for a really long time it turns exactly. green <laughs> it's, it's stag stagnant <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I want I wanted to ask a question about this picture because uh it looks like the sides of pyramids there on the sides of them they're actually growing crops or something or it looks like right. some type of green like sod. Like I guess sod. the sod you get uh, here in Florida, bro. Yeah, Florida's the sod. biggest producer Grass. of sod. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's so mm -hmm. fertile. The ground is so fertile here. They don't know what it is because the soil quality is actually pretty low but you can grow anything you want here it does have very rich soil as well but so let's so, so it's like a botanical garden right it's like like what they do with the yeah. you know, with the rainforest right they mm -hmm. it's like an out of control botanical garden they're like hey nobody can ever live here nobody could ever live here and they're tearing it down they're coming across entire complexes Oh, what what did that mean? Oh, that there was people there? But you just said that nobody could ever survive there. So they're finding these, it's like an out of control botanical garden. That's, mm -hmm. that's wild. Like, like you said, you quoted, I think you said it, that one of the first expeditioners went through Florida and said, 
humans can't live here. Like only God, it's God's country. Only yeah, God cause... can live here because it's so. But whatever. Wild. Let's, let's move on. Um, if you want to, uh, I wanted on... to say something about uh, the the navel too, uh, because I I, I kind of disagree with uh, um, what you said, and some somewhat, but not really. But the whole naval idea, there's like these naval civilizations all over the uh, place. Uh, I think Petra is another naval place. Um, when we talked to Michelle Merle, I asked him what Nephilim means because there's Nephilim and Nephilim. And he said Nephil means naval. So I think that maybe Nephilim is uh, these different naval homes where they all went to. So you said that they're there for the gods. So possibly this is where the gods resided, resided in these different naval homes in these different places all over the planet that were the center of these other ringlands. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. kind of how I see. You're right. You did mention in the Mediterranean or right outside of the Mediterranean, they found some stone anchors. Now they find a lot of stone anchors in the Mediterranean and they find some out in like the Polynesian Sea, Indonesia area. What makes Florida significant in that, um, what makes them distinct is that their anchors are, until we see otherwise, are the largest and the oldest in the world. Now that would indicate that you had the most source original well well um well trained people that knew how to make boats that would be that would be large enough to need anchors that big hmm. so you also have the most canoes in the world here in florida and they find those they pick those out all the time so it like um you know i think so much wonderful stuff happened in the mediterranean and i don't want to take away or claim anyone any other country's significance but i do think that as far as naval you know naval history you know, here on the west coast of florida you have the most ballast stones that large ships like that would have needed and you have the most stone anchors and they're the, the largest unless i see somewhere else um as far as John and I know, and we've looked really hard, they are the largest in the world. The one that you see, you see one in in uh, the mountains of Ararat that is even remotely as big as the ones in Florida. And that one's about as as large as a man. I think it's eight feet tall, maybe. Maybe it's only six feet tall. But um, we have ones in Florida that are two times that size. So they... Damn. The one down from Mount Ararat is definitely where one of these ark ships landed. Now, if, if there's mm -hmm. only evidence of one ark ship of this size, of this magnitude in Mount Ararat, but we have about, John thinks about 400 ships because you have 2,000 stone anchors that he's identified. That would be about 400 of these ships that are as big as that one ship that you have in Mount Ararat. So that seems to me like you have an entire fleet of those ships that you only get maybe one of in another, in another country. That kind of indicates to me that that ship in Turkey, very probably, if it, if it didn't come from the North Pole, which it probably did come from the North Pole, but Florida was the primary port because Tampa Naval is a Navy is an exactly uh, Tampa is a natural harbor and it has a it has a external harbor. You have the east coast of Florida in floor in Plato's description of Atlantis. There's two things that really give it away as being Florida. You have a I think he says 1100 mile canal i don't know if at 1.1 something i don't know if it's 11,000 miles long or 1.1 thousand oh 1.1 thousand canal and seawall that surrounded the outward coast of atlantis 
Florida is the only land mass in the world that has a thin stripped seawall that goes all the way around it. That's the intercoastal of Florida. And the intercoastal used to be freshwater at one point. They, they added all these inlets, so now it's salty. It used to be much more fresh. So that is your inland river that surrounds the 11,000 miles of coastline or 1.1 thousand miles of coastline. So that seems like Florida. And then Plato talks about the alternating zones of land and sea. Now that would be the east coast of Florida is the external harbor and the external uh, bay, so to speak. The west coast of Florida would, is the inland sea. The, the surf is always much more calm there. It's like crystal. And this is the crystal sea that Plato said was on the inland gulf of Atlantis. So, you know, I don't want to pit my Atlantis against the Bach saga's Atlantis. I think they are Atlantic, and that's all it was. I, uh, if I can just bring this idea up, um, sure. I've been saying for a while now that at one point this phonetic idea of alt land east, as in all land is ice, was probably true, but then that word i mean i i see a big game of telephone as part of this situation in history not all of it is like controlled and hidden it, it feels like this moved from a statement to the name of a place like this was at once mm -hmm. this phonetic name alt east but eventually became atlantis so the atlantis that we hear about from solon perhaps he is talking about the people of florida or something like that long 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 before that we have this alt lant east you know does that jive yes i agree with you um and i've always said it's the it's the duty of every group culture person family to make a claim that they are the first they are the original mm -hmm. they are the source that's the first step to pride and you know mm. being proud of of your lineage and we should all be searching for those connections in our own culture our own mm -hmm. state and so basically uh, i just sorry yeah. that's okay i had a question for you because uh, the the western side of America was known as Atlan, and uh, mm -hmm. very similar to Atlantis. How do you? Why do you think that that part of America was considered Atlantis? Also, it was Atlantis in my documentary. So the whole continent. The whole continent was the Greater Atlantis, Atlantis mm -hmm. Major, because it's the Atlantic landmass. That only the, I mean, only the Phoenicians and the Vikings knew it was here. The Greeks yeah. and Romans never left the, the Pillars of Hercules because they did not have the knowledge of the stars. <clears throat> the Phoenicians, Astrology. the Phoenicians had the knowledge of the stars. Now the Phoenicians are not the original people either. The Finnish people are. The Phoenicians are one of their colonies. And that is the, that's the colony that contended with the Greeks and the Romans, who are the Jupiter, the Jupiterian races that uh, worship Jupiter. And that's okay. There's nothing wrong with Jupiter. He's the best planet. But the Phoenicians and the sea people, they revered Neptune and Poseidon because they didn't have any land power. Um, the Scythi Well, the Scythians who are the Scottish, the Scuti, they're mm -hmm. also the Swedish, the Sven line, the Scythians, are the cavalry. They were the cavalry, and the Phoenicians were the navy. Hmm. And these were some of the first people to smoke weed, by the way. They, <laughs> they introduced weed to the ancient Americas, and they're the ones that brought cocaine and tobacco from South America to the mummies who did smoke tobacco and did use cocaine. That's not a conspiracy theory. Right. 
you can look it up in your little MS, MSNBC uh, Fauci bot, you know. Yeah, standardized. Search, search engine. And there is cocaine and tobacco from the Americas in Egypt. So someone went across. It was probably the Phoenicians. The Phoenicians became the Moors. And we have all this Moorish history in Florida, too. So uh, the Phoenicians were here, too. It may have just been the Phoenicians, but somebody, somebody had a shit ton of boats lined up on the west coast of Florida that all dropped their anchors in groups, in clumps of 10, 20, sometimes 100, all in a small little area. Um, they're all in my, my documentary, not all of them, but the ones that we could see. And, you know, I always think to myself or say to myself, the truth is where they don't, they don't let you talk about it. It's the, the stuff you're not allowed to look about. It's the stuff they don't give any recognition to, and they don't talk about anything in reference to these Florida anchors. <clears throat> They're given zero attention. There's a couple plaques on some of them when you go up to them, but there's no, uh, there's no mainstream information whatsoever. So that tells me they're very hush hush about this, and I think I know why. What do they call them? Do they call them anything in particular? Yeah, they call them Indian rocks because That's the <laughs> because the Indians had a reverence for these stones, especially the one that has the Adam and Eve face on it that John uh, first saw that got him started on this journey. Basically, they have. A Atlas, and Atlas is Atlantis. He's the godfather of Atlantis. Um, and they have an Atlas and a Hesperus, or an Adam and an Eve. Adam comes from Atlas. Adam was punished with the a Adam's apple, shoved down his throat by God. You know, God, <laughs> he fucked up, and God took the apple and shoved it down Adam's throat. So then we have Adam's apple. Well, Atlas is man. Adam is just man. Atlas is just man. Man put the God put the world on on man's shoulders. So man, as a gender, has to bear the weight of the world on his shoulders. Women, mm. women bear the weight of the world in their hips. The feminine—that's where uh, girls have their power yeah. in their in their hip power. But that's why Atlas was cursed to hold the world on his shoulders. If you look at men. They're top heavy. They're sh shoulder guys. You look at women, they're bottom heavy. So I don't know why I was talking about that, but no, I like the connections. <clears throat> so let's look at another one of those. I think we should get into the Bach, the actual Bach connections. If you could just like shift. Bach Tower. <laughs> yeah. Could you just click on the Bach Tower, that one? Juan, please. And Juan, you said you've gone there, right? Mm -hmm. We've both been there. That's yeah. great. We should go together, bro. We're we're gonna go there soon and film something there. Nice. But basically, that is mostly granite. Or sorry, marble. It's mostly marble, pink marble. There's a little bit yeah. of lime limestone too, but it's mostly uh, marble and granite. I think is the gray. I could be wrong. So that that is not Tartarian. Sorry to dis disappoint people. Hmm. Um, that's kind of why I haven't covered it so much yet. I do think that was built in 1925 to 29, whenever he built it. Mm -hmm. And because there's pictures of it being built, they're not the normal fake construction photos. I think it was built, but there was a tower there before that we have no information about. And it was made of stone blocks. So and what, can, how do you, how have you gotten there? I have a picture of that. I didn't prepare it for this, okay. for this meeting. I don't have a picture of that. Um, but it's like a depiction of a previous it's stone them, structure. It's them ripping down the old stone. Oh. I think it was just like a water tower or something. Sure. That's, that's what they'll say it was, but it's the highest point in peninsular Florida. 
And I think at the time he thought it was the highest point in Florida. He was told it was the highest point in Florida. So he bought it and built. Mm -hmm. I think it's, I think it's actually the second highest point in Florida. Now I could be wrong. And who was he? Who did so, this? Yes. Sorry. Excuse oh, me. No, no worries. So, uh, Edward Buck with a K B O K. Okay. He is Dutch. Now, I know in my gut they're related because I know how how families work and to be that close back then, they they are related. And they're also related to the Bach, like Johann Sebastian Bach with a C H. And yeah. we know yeah. we were wondering that as well. Yes. Uh they have some of that royal blood in them too. Bach was a genius. His kids were all geniuses and you know, they have finesse. If you have some of this old Finnish blood, the elven blood. Yeah. This is where Finnish, I don't know if you guys, have you guys watched my um, Hell on Earth? My own? No, I, I can't mm -hmm. wait. So <laughs> I, I about this stuff. It's my, my first video that, that did really well was actually about the box saga. Oh, and great. Wow. I, it's funny, too, because, like, I s have scoured the Internet. I mean, and maybe you're just that shadow band uh, or something. Um, disinfo, disinfo, not shadow band. <laughs> but uh, the Bach saga, basically, I I forget why I was bringing that up. But Sorry, um, No, it's okay. So here we have the Bach Tower. It is huge it's unlike anything else in florida this was built for a purpose this was not just some retired guy that wanted to build a cute little garden for his friends and community that's what we're told edward bach is considered one of the most influential men yeah that's a thank you that's a good picture to to rest on for a little so that's the tower from afar and he basically set out to build a garden of eden and he tried to design his garden like the garden of eden he had a tower i don't think there was a tower in eden but he built that tower and that little picture you see right there that uh hammered etching into metal i think it's copper or bronze i don't know but that picture is basically eden that is, he has all of the images of Genesis, the scenes of Genesis printed onto the tower. So he's pretty much, he's either obsessed with the Garden of Eden or he's trying to tell people it's the Garden of Eden. Mm. And this, this is only 60 miles from Tampa Bay. So wow. you could drive there in an hour from where uh, John is talking about a lot of his stuff going on with the Garden of Eden. Then you have... Mm. E.E. E. Calloway, the Christian um, pastor and writer, or I think it said he's a lawyer, uh, he wrote a book about Bristol, Florida, near Tallahassee being the Garden of Eden, because it's where Noah built his ark. So you have all the ark stones in Florida, which are definitely anchors of ancient giant stones. Some people say they're balloon anchors, like more, more stones to more because if you're mooring something, you're anchoring it. Hmm. Um, that it's a mooring stone for airships. That's not a bad theory, but I think they were underwater. There's a lot of evidence of them being underwater. So you have the most arc stones, arc anchors. And then you have the gopher wood that is that only grows in this one area of Florida on the west coast. That was almost definitely the wood that Noah built the ark out of. And that was the basis for this other guy's story. Saxer has nothing to do with that guy. His own independent research, his own findings, and ha had no knowledge of that guy until I asked him about E.E. E. Calloway. He didn't know. Or he, I, actually, he saw it in the video I made. But blah, blah, blah. So you have two different people arriving at the same. You know, I don't think I've ever heard of someone saying... Pennsylvania is the Garden of Eden, or I don't think I've ever heard someone say Virginia is the Garden of Eden, or right. But basically, Jackson, Missouri. Really? Oh, really? 
Right. That's a weird one. I've never heard of that. I want to point out the guy that did this <laughs> engraving, Samuel Yellen. He is uh he's he was a master, an American master blacksmith and metal designer. And he went to this right here. I saw oh, nice. Yellen received awards from Art Institution of Chicago, the American Institute of Architects, the Architectural League of New York, and the Bach Civic Award from the city of Pence, uh, Philadelphia. Oh, wow. In 1925, the Bach mm -hmm. Civic Award. And obviously he did the, these are all his works. Nice. And he did the boxing tower in Lake Wales. And he did a whole mm -hmm. bunch of other stuff. But he's a... Wow. Interesting cat. Buck, buck, buck. Mm -hmm. So, if we look at, and I think you, I think you said it, Andy, earlier, like bog saga. Yeah, like the bog, like the bog people. Mm -hmm. That's a that's a good connection to. Uh, yeah, the, it could be bog phonetic. saga. Everything, everything's phonetics. Everything's. Um, where, yeah, and you can ask, uh, like you've been saying, like you can go on your MSNBC or whatever <clears throat> and look up, you know, real etymologists and they'll tell you the same, that it comes from phonetics first. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, we'll, get into, we'll get into some more etymology at the end, if, if you remind me. But <laughs> Bach Tower right here. <clears throat> Basically, it has Eden on it. Yeah, yeah, that's my whole thing. Florida's the Garden of Eden. You don't really have to believe that or not. But what is very important, can you go to the one that shows um, the picture of, can you scroll down a little? I think there's more than that. That's is all that, I got, dude. That's all you got? Mm-hmm. Oh, shit. Okay, let me send you one. It's probably this two without. Yeah, something yeah, here. Two. Okay, yeah, they were they were in my iCloud, so they didn't pop over to you uh, let me see here no. uh but yeah it, interesting bog uh because it's like swampy or uh watery area and berg or borg uh, yeah borg is like castle and berg is uh mm -hmm. like something that sticks up or like a burr uh, like a right. thorn on a, a rose uh burr. a spur a spur mm -hmm. yeah Right. So Good that's connection. why, like Saint Petersburg, mm -hmm. is like uh, something that sticks up from the ground. Right. There are no bergs. So why is there a berg in Florida? Because berg <laughs> berg can mean mountain. It can also yeah, mean like a... city. It can also just be a stone. So mm -hmm. it might be a symbolic stone. But here, I'm gonna send you. And th and this is. What material is this door? This door is wild. It looks gold. Looks like gold, yeah. It's called bronze repouse. Repouse. Oh, Whoa, How do you call it? Dude. How do you say that? I forget. But I'm here. Yeah, I'm well, gonna take I'm some gonna... super close up photos when you go there again, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm about to like yeah, jump on the little <laughs> I'm gonna jump over the moat and go into the little island that the cause the the tower itself is all like there's a moat around it, so you oh can't no get, shit, you can't really yeah. see that. Wow. You can't, yeah, so you can't see it in the pictures. But look at this: is water is a moat, ah. like, and it's a koi pond. So I'd have to literally jump. I mean, I'll take the risk. I'll jump on, okay. take a few close up <laughs> pictures, and then just get kicked out. Just ride a koi fish. So they, they don't let you get up to the tower. You can't go inside nope. of that no. or anything. The, or and it? the only yeah. reason I have that, <clears throat> the only reason I have that illustration. Is because I have the book <clears throat> that was written by Edward Bach. We had we sell it in the store. Mm. Um, so I took that picture right there. Could the tower be well, no, because this is the this is Eden, but Look at I, the mean, moat. I was kind of wondering if maybe I, I've often wondered if yeah. the, a lot of these kind of things poking out of the ground, these constructions are somehow reminiscent of that magnetic mountain idea mm -hmm. in the north with like it is. it is this mm. would be it's like phallic I, a lot of times too but i don't know it's double meaning so you're right helsinki is the center i've always mm -hmm. uh, agreed with that although i always will agree with that helsinki hell was the center point the north point. right 
and all the other ringlands were to pay homage to the all father's land right or something like yes. that that's according to Vox Saga as well so i think florida probably would have been one of the first ringlands capital cities that they checked in on mm -hmm. very 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 early on after the ice age and that's what it looks like because the burials they always date they date the agriculture the burials and the domesticated animals mm -hmm. all all to that 10 and 7000 years ago timeline so the connection from this florida area to helsinki would almost make more sense talking about the first period in the box saga as paradise like paradise time mm -hmm. where all these ringlands were totally connected and all that not physically not geographically but you know seafaring that everyone was together under this one system after the ice age it's interesting because of how long this process would have taken to reestablish everything and maybe to what you're saying i don't know that the saga the box saga talks about um helsinki thriving again do, do they thrive again after the ice age i don't remember that dan do you well i don't know if it sorry well i was thinking that maybe if not then maybe florida or this area this more southern away from the ice area as far south as they could get was maybe their next you know prime spot all father area i don't know mm -hmm. but dan do you remember like after the after everything after the ice age ended did they they return there and use it as udinma once again um i think it was established again mm -hmm. after after that but it wasn't for a long period of time yeah um so in the meantime i do recall i think that they said that they did let some people were able to go outside of the wall but it was very few yeah they time. had like they, they had, had to get permission to leave from hmm. from the ice wall they so had they, to, they were able to go out before the ice wall came down okay but... go ahead yeah they had two breakaway those are like the dan and the sven the two breakaway who okay yeah who, who didn't want to sit around during the atlantis mm -hmm. period because okay. the, the, the ten brothers went out and established the ten tropical kingdoms but then you had the, the leftovers and you know these weren't the same people before the flood so i think they were expecting to this this hierarchy to like hold up forever right I, I don't think i don't think they understand and i'm not trying to like patr patronize them but i don't think they understood the astrological ages if that mm -hmm. makes sense um Eeyore Bach and his family. This is would probably be a good time to, to talk about that. Eeyore Bach and his family, I believe, originate from the age of Capricorn. So okay. we're in the age of Aquarius now. <clears throat> the next age, 2,000 years from now, is going to be Capricorn. So that would mean Bach family, if I had to guess a lot of these events they're describing, was 22 thousand years ago now you can throw that timeline right out the window it doesn't really matter <laughs> but basically eeyore bach bach means goat right bach yeah. means goat in dutch yeah. and swedish the root finnish and the box oh fuck i forgot what i was saying <laughs> um about the goat symbolism he represents the goat right Capricorn. so eeyore bach i believe that the royal families of antiquity had a crest an animal right like a family animal family like game of thrones the stag family the dragon yes. family. so and we know this to be true you had your coat of arms your family's coat of arms and it usually had an animal on it so the animals 
Um, you used to, and I, my evidence for this is that in the Bach saga, he talks about how all the boys were born on the spring equinox, how they would plan the births so that all the boys would be born at the same time. And mm -hmm. learning astrology before that, I heard Santos Benacci say five years ago that the ancient Babylonians and the Sumerian armies and stuff would have their men born in Aries to be the best fighters, the best soldiers. And their mm. archers, their archers were Sagittarius's and, and so on. And the women would be born in May to be the most fertile. Now, when you look at Eeyore Bach, we know that he was born out of compulsion, where it was like, he needs to get born right now, right? Mm -hmm. And he, the guy basically had sex with his, his daughter in yeah. order to, to make that happen. It was the only choice. Now, Eeyore Bach is a Capricorn. His father, Canut Victor Bachstrom, was also a Capricorn. So that tells me right there that family bears their children in the sign of Capricorn. If you know your astrology, Capricorn is the timekeeper because Capricorn, mm -hmm. the goat, is ruled by Saturn. Saturn is the god Ooh. of time, chronos, chronology. So they are the timekeepers at the center of the earth who keep all the history alive. And they had all the timelines. If you go to South America, who is the Saturnian race, because there's five planets, two luminaries, that gives you seven planets, but the five planets, right? Because the sun and the moon don't count. Those five planets produced the 10 tropical races. You have two African races, you have two Asian races, you have two um, American races, mm. right? So those planetary correspondences are there. Um, wow. And when he, when he talks about the Dan and the Sven, if you know your astrology, the, the eagle people, the Jupiter people, and the dragon serpent people, who are the... Uh, the Neptunians, the Poseidons, the people that worship the subconscious, the unconscious mind. Um, mm -hmm. And they they tend to forego military strength and kind of just uh, dolly and just dilly dolly and just uh, play around in the gardens and take drugs. Priests, and the high priests. Kind of, yeah. It could have, right, you're right. It could have been two different castes that got pitted mm -hmm. against each other when it's supposed mm. to, when it's supposed to be like this it got turned like that maybe so now you have saint patrick kicking out the serpent all the snakes yeah from ireland and that is that is the story of the dan line cuz patrick is is uh, my middle name is patrick mm -hmm. um narco patrick longo yeah um <laughs> and Patrick is the Irish Peter. Potterick, like mm. pot, like Harry mm. Potter with his mm. light with his lightning bolt on his third eye chakra for Thursday. It was Thor. Thursday. Wow. So that's the Thor chakra, the Thord eye. And that is Jupiter's chakra. So good kings wear their crowns across their foreheads bad kings wear it on their crown chakra because they're submitting to saturn they're snuffing their crown chakra like a yamaka a, a zucchetto is the catholic version mm -hmm. zucchetto the catholic yamaka the, you you submit to saturn when you snuff your crown chakra basically blah 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 so back to the capricorns you had em emblematic am animals of each family. And the Bach family was undoubtedly the goat. Eeyore, Capricorn, his father was a Capricorn. If Eeyore would have a son, he would have had his son be a Capricorn as well. And I can't find a date for Victor, uh, Knut, Victor's father, 
But I, if I had to guess, he was a Capricorn as well, because it said right there in the saga, thousands of years ago, they made sure everyone was born at the same time. Mm -hmm. So that tells me that they would still have the, the means to do that, the, the willpower to do that today. Well, and they also had ast astrology. Exactly. In, in, you know, they, that's part of it as well already. The, this is pretty impressive, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, in Florida, you have some of the oldest. That's the uh, burial that Dan mentioned of the cat next to the human. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think they say it's 7,000 years old. Uh, they mm -hmm. say that is where that's the earliest evidence of the domestication of the cat. And okay, there we go. Let's look at let's look at that back wow. kind of back to the topic. I made this graphic off of a picture out of the Bach book. It's I think the last illustration, and this is going to show you. So it's fitting that we're doing this towards the end. This is the nail in the coffin where. <laughs> Bach might not have been the same exact Bach family, but he certainly arrived at a lot of the same conclusions as Eeyore Bach. And this ties more so into the Saxer saga, but you'll see how they're related. Now, the Bach Tower claims to be Eden. He says his garden is like the Garden of Eden, right? Now, if you could, do you have the capability to zoom, to zoom on these guys? If you could start top right in the photo, let's just go clockwise from top right. So in, in the uh, description, he says how he, he uh, put in the old cities, the cities of old. Now, what's interesting is that there's no St. Augustine in this picture, which is the oldest city in America. So there's no St. Augustine, there's no Tampa, there's no Miami, but there's Charleston, South Carolina, Palm Beach, Florida, and then Tallahassee, Florida, which as I said before, was right next to Bristol, which is where Noah got the wood for his ark. And most of these giant old ark ships were being made from that wood that is right next to the Apalachicola River. So that's the apple of Eden, the Apalachicola. That's where you get the Appalachies. That's a native word. We're told that's mm -hmm. a, a native word. But if you know your phonetics, you know that is the same word as apple or Apollo <laughs> or Apollo. Yeah, either way, it's still significant. And Appa in Bach Saga mm -hmm. means the, like, basically the wise man, like the grandfather, I believe. Yeah. yeah, you're right. Now, if we go down, down to the right, please, there's Palm Beach for some reason. Palm Beach is not that old at all. It's only like 120 years old. I'm sorry, I misspoke there. I just realized it in my head. I'm thinking Oko, I'm thinking Oko and Aka. Yeah. So I'm yeah. Appa, I'm is Appa the uh the big bison, flying bison from Avatar? I don't know. It is, yeah. yeah. Uh, Apu. But Appa Apu. is also okay. yeah. No, it's Appa. Yeah. Is it Appa or Apu? It's Appa. Apu is from The Simpsons. I'm gonna fact check. <laughs> That's right. He's the fucking Indian guy. <laughs> I'm an idiot. Anyway, so if we look at the dragon right there, you see, I have it uh, labeled for the video that I made, and mm -hmm. Saxer talks about there being a dragon in Eden, and the dragon would be this this serpent, or uh, you know. In Florida, we have alligators, and there's these depictions of ancient giant alligators, blah, blah, blah. It could very well could be a dragon or the basis for a dragon. Imagine mm -hmm. if you um, lived in the North Pole, you came over to Florida for a short amount of time, and you saw those things, and then you had to go back to Finland or whatever, and you only had that one experience to, to base this animal off of. I'm sure they were big back then, bro. <laughs> they were oh, they were yeah. huge. I have a 
a picture of like 10 Indians going up against one alligator. It was crazy. And, but so that's why it's labeled dragon. That's not very relevant to what we're talking about. But then hidden on the compass of the map, you have oh, this fleur de, lis. Yeah. fleur de lis. Now the fleur de lis mm -hmm. is the symbol, the emblem of the Merovingian dynasty. Now the Merovingian were French mostly, but they're all they're Frankish because France comes from the Franks who were German, but the French embraced their Roman heritage more so than their Nordic heritage. So that's why French are not so Germanic. They they're more Roman, but the Merovingians were also uh, Rome. Sorry, Germans, Goths. Allens, and the Goths are the Gata, the Gata, like Gothburg, mm -hmm. um, Sweden, which is uh, Goth, whatever, what's the name? That is one of the Gotland, thank Gotland, you. Gotland, yeah. Gotland is one of these Atlantises, if I'm not mistaken, was in Voxaga, yeah. They had a little uh, colony in Gotland, and that was one of the Atlantises. And even, even in the box saga, I think there's three Atlantises. You have you have the first leaving of the ice where they stopped in... Um, let me look at my world map. They stopped in like Iceland or Newfoundland or one of those Arctic islands. Mm -hmm. um, and then they stopped in one of those Swedish islands and then they stopped in the British Isles. So the third Atlantis in the Bach saga is the British Isles, where the fin the Phoenicians did go. Hmm. So there you go right there. The northern extent of the Phoenician Empire was Britain. The southern Don't extent the southern extent of the Viking Empire was Britain. They went down to Rome to, you know, at some point and and all that stuff, but hmm. England. Wow. So the Fleur de Lis is basically all of the uh, the Fleur de Lis is going to be more tied into the Dan line, the, the tribe of Dan. Now, that's because these are the people that made it all the way to um, Mesopotamia and Israel and then back again. So, mm -hmm. so those are the, um, like the Allens and the Allens are the Aryans because you switch the L and the R alien is Aryan. So Allen, <laughs> Allen, and there, there you go. That's the big secret that I like, that I like to say. And you just touched and, on uh, something that I, go ahead, Dan. Well, I was going to say in Louisiana, when they do the Mardi Gras, they have a Bacchus festival and mm. do a King Bacchus. Yeah. Ba Bacchus is depicted as having, he, I don't think he's a goat, but he has two goats in front of him. I think that mm. um, Zeus has that too, but Zeus is not the goat. So don't get those. But let's look at the flirt. Sorry. <laughs> I was just going to throw in the, you know, you touched on this whole, switching the r and the l the al the alien versus aryan and that's a thread that i've often come to is that you know a lot of these of aliens are all about these nordic peoples mm -hmm. all the shiny ones and everything we've talked about it many times dan and i mm -hmm. and um i've been kind of digging <clears throat> excuse me into a lot of the irish and scottish mythos and stuff like that about the twa the day the nun and mm -hmm. and all these fairy tales and yes. talking about fair folk and i, I yeah. can't help but think that it's all phonetic there we're talking about white people right. we're talking about the caucasians mm -hmm. and caucasian is just the one group of white people that got stuck in turkey after the last ice age mm. <clears throat> Ar armenia turkey area so that's where caucasian comes from but the mm -hmm. alien aryan to me that is the most important key to the whole conspiracy truth realm. 
Yeah. I used to get be so caught up in the whole alien thing. Me too. Hell yeah. John, you know, John is a big believer in aliens and I love John and I agree with everything he says. I think we just have a different set of terminology, vocabulary mm -hmm. to describe the same events. Um, I'm an astrologer, so I always defer to the astrology. Yeah. Well, well, John, he was one of the original ancient alien people. He knew Zechariah Stitchin personally back in like oh, wow. the, the 80s and 70s, and he knew Eric von Donegan. He actually debated Eric von Donegan at one of the first um, Whoa. ancient alien conferences. He wow. was as a he was arguing, debating a panel of three three other people on whether or not there was a capstone to the pyramid. Oh, so he was arguing in favor of a capstone, and I think the other people were arguing against there ever mm. being a capstone. Hmm. Blah, blah, blah. His mother was part of the ancient astronaut society. Or, um, well, yeah. that's interesting because, I mean, we even in the conspiracy-minded community have, you know, Admiral Richard Byrd's quote unquote journal that I believe his entire family denies is even in existence, but it plays into that, especially if it's fake, it plays into this idea that for whatever reason, they're handing us a story about Aryans underground that were super tall, that had white hair, you know, blonde hair and were this it's this inner earth thing center of the earth you know it's exactly very interesting that it's that story is handed to us and every conspiracy person and tv show owned by networks uh mm -hmm. is talking about that story so it's very weird yes L like you said you you hit the nail on the head with like a golden platter like hey nazis and aliens right here primetime history channel primetime right. dis dis discovery channel it's it's the most viewed thing on their channel it's the thing that they push the hardest mm -hmm. so ancient alien is definitely a psyop right i've always said you can take the word ancient alien and swap the r and congratulations you now have the most um sense censored word on the planet Whereas aliens uh, is going to be the next COVID. They, so oh, they're, absolutely. They're preparing us for the aliens. But alien is Aryan. And all these ancient sites were created by Aryans. Not because it's the German Nazi <laughs> party. It's right. because the Japanese are Aryan. The Persians are Aryan. So the cradle of civilization, Persia japan who had some of the most refined ancient culture and they have the ainu who founded their um upper class and the ainu of japan are the anunnaki yeah and the anunnaki are the reptiles they're the samurai the the why they're depicted as lizards sometimes is because you had primitive people encountering people that probably had full suits of armor so they would call them dragons or lizards or stuff like that. So you have the samurai of Japan, and then you have the Sarmatians of Poland. Mm -hmm. And those guys wore um, armor, and they were a sword warrior class, a warrior society. Mm -hmm. And they are the same as the samurai. Wow. And basically... At the end of World War II, sorry, World War One, or maybe it was a Russian Civil War or Rus Russian uh, Sino-Russian War. I don't know. At the end of one of these wars, they had a Polish, um, Polish saber, saberman, a Sarmatian, mm -hmm. go go one on one with a samurai. One on one. You, one on one with a sam with a samurai. <laughs> And the the Polish guy won, and ki and killed the samurai in a single single swoop. <sighs> so it's the same culture. You had the mm -hmm. Sarmatians, and they were like the Hun, these Eurasian steppe travelers. That was the cavalry. 
of the Finnish or Phoenician navy. And the Phoenician or the Venetian or the Vaughn, the Vaughner, mm. the Vaughner people, like Finland is Va is Vinland. Yeah. Um, and Venice and Sven. Sven is the you know the Vaughn, the Venice people, the Phoenicians, they're the sea power people who have the sea power. And they're supposed to be a mercantile class. What happened in, in, in ancient times is the mercantile class usurped the spiritual class and the warrior class. They made a deal with the warrior class to usurp the spiritual class. So they've stolen the spiritual caste, which is supposed to be the tip of the pyramid. They've stolen it. And now the, the mercantile class is holding the spiritual class hostage. So they've turned religion into a commodity. And they exported that the same way they export their little uh, cookies and toy action figures. They put them on boats and ship them around the world. They do the same thing with religion today. Mm. So religion got usurped by the mercantile caste. There should be seven castes or five castes. And the third one stole the first one's place and that's part of why we're so screwed up today and that's my um take on the whole what's what's wrong with the world is that you had these 10 tropical kingdoms and in the box saga they say it's uh krishna in in india that turned on the whole program and and switched sides and started screwing everything up and had the first ego trip right mm. as, they, as they say so i think it, it was in babylon that you had you had these 10 families go out from the north pole or out from atlantis out from F florida maybe i think they went from the north pole but they stopped in florida because it was a major seaport it's a, yeah. a nat natural seaport and basically from there they established contact with the 10 ancient kingdoms, the Maya, the Aztec, the Inca, the, the Dogon tribe, the Japanese, you know, they established contact. And then the one tribe, the one group that made it to Babylon, they got to Babylon. They saw how, how degraded and how awful the common people were, how much work it was going to take to reintegrate agriculture and and asked astrology and all that stuff and they just said fuck it I, we kind of we kind of like this where we we know everything we have all, mm. all the food we have all the language we have all the mathematics we have the technology they kind of liked it like that and this would have been the first kind of like the invention of the lying where they, mm -hmm. went, they went back on the program right started refusing their offerings and they switched to the black magic and right this, this is why you get civilization coming out of mesopotamia which Dude. which we know it didn't right we know it didn't come from mesopotamia you have indian history that is way older than that you have uh nordic nordic history like runes etched on stones that are old, way older than that. Um, but yeah, that's why you get Babylon. Babylon is the, the uh, archetypal bad place. Mm -hmm. And it's where the languages, I think, got mixed up as they started. You had, <clears throat> and Tolkien knew all this. Dude, yeah. He, as soon as he translated Finnish grammar, that's when he wrote his first elven language. Exactly. Exactly. Because he knows Finnish or Phoenician and actually English. This is why Bach told his story in three languages. Yes. The root, the Finnish and English. Uh, and actually Finnish was the least important of the three. Because the Vonner language wasn't, I believe. Yeah. So. The Finnish, the modern Finnish is very Asian influenced. It loses it loses a lot of the um, European nuance because they were taken over by the Hun, and mm -hmm. the the Hun came through and split the northern Yurgic people 
from the southern Yurgic families, language families. That's Hungarian. Okay, so there's another thing. Why does it tie back into Florida? Juan knows this. I talk very sideways. So, that's fine. This is so great. We're just kind of brushing all of these topics, and that's okay. Just but, to keep it, unfortunately, like I gotta, I I can't go too much longer. But I mean, by all means, you guys could keep going if I had to had to go. Right. But, Let me get. Um, there was one more connection I wanted to make, other than the Fleur de Lis being right there. That's the Merovingian dynasty. Bach is making using his signature, his Merovingian signature. Because mm. Bach, Bach was Merovingian. He's descended from those groups. I, I know he's descended from them. He's con did you know that he's considered, Edward Bach is considered one of the most influential men in American history? That's so bizarre. I've mm. never heard his name before. And, and why is that? It's because he, he edited a, a woman's journal, the most popular woman's like home journal. So it's like like more people have read his his writing than you know like Mark Twain or some crazy shit like that. So, <laughs> but here's a crazy connection. He was writing for the Home Journal, but he had all these occult circles, and he knew all this stuff about you know Eden and astrology. He has the twelve signs of astrology etched onto his tower in a sundial, along with Genesis. That's perfect. Yeah. So the sun, so the sundial not only tells the hour, but it tells the Zodiac sign of the, of the month. So here's another good um, connection. Oh, fuck. So Che Guevara, when he was taking over Cuba, started a woman's home advice radio show. <laughs> it was like the, it was like the most popular radio show in Cuba. Okay, what was it actually? It was a method of disseminating codes and and um, instructions, communist like instructions to the guerrillas that were in the cities that Get were hiding, the fuck hiding from people. So Che Guevara literally was like a radio host talking. Or his friends were, I don't know how much he was on it himself, but he started this radio show that was like advice for women. That was what it was called. <laughs> and it would, it would be if, if like BuzzFeed is, is giving out like North Korean, like uh, <laughs> Manchurian candidate codes, like through <laughs> their, their woman's advice. So I think Bach was doing something like that. Where his, his woman's home journal. Oh where shit! He was we should get a hold of that. <laughs> he was literally teaching women about like feng shui and like take your shoes off before you go inside and stuff. Yeah, I, yeah. I think it was all kind of like you have Edward Leed Scallon writing his books about the coral castle. Well, one of them is is like advice. It's called a book in every home, and it's mm -hmm. an advice book, just like little random bits of advice. People have spent hundreds of hours pouring over that and are positive. It's a it's a code manual. Cool. So the and he built the Coral Castle. Well, Edward Bach built the Bach Tower for no reason, literally right. no reason whatsoever. And wow. apparently all he did was he was the editor of some newspapers and magazines and stuff like that. I think he was a, I think he was a bit more interesting of a character than that. Now the last connection I have, I really hope I sent you. Really He's an you, alchemist. What, uh, do which, you, which do you see a, a picture about Lake Worth? So here's the final connection. Which one? The only Lake Worth. Oh no, it's Lake Wales. Oh gosh. Okay, hang on, hang on, hang on. It's in my screenshots. Just email it to me. This is really fucking fascinating, dude. The last yeah. connection, which yeah. I can t I can tell you offhand, but I want to show you proof. I don't want you to just take it from me. Mm -hmm. um, is the fact that here we go. Okay, e email incoming, Juan. Oh, dude, you're gonna, 
You've read about this guy? I was literally reading a freaking book today and then we're talking about this dude. <laughs> the Dragon King. Oh, who? The Merovingian guy? No. Uh, Von Drakenberg. Von Drakenberg, yeah. He was yeah. friends with Tracy Twyman. He's a, he's a Merovingian. Yeah. And the dude so, was like poor. <laughs> it wasn't that one. But uh, that guy explains about how the Merovingian line goes back to a lot of the biblical characters. But I think you should have just gotten the last one I sent. Yeah, I did. I'm going to download And then that's right all, all the material I have, basically. Other than I see um, there's a Bach. We have a Bach school that was made by these the German Bach billionaire family. But it's B-A-K. Mm-hmm. So, but the fanatics don't lie. They have, yeah, they have a school of the arts here in South Florida. So we're looking but, at Florida's Finnish community. So that's what I really wanted to show you. That's the kicker. That's the nail in the coffin. Is that much as John Saxer believes the Greek come to the west coast of Florida to return to their spawning ground, which they used to live in before the flood. Because Tarpon Springs, very strange. Tarpon Springs has the most Greek people outside of Greece. Right. And it's the, it's the Greek capital of America. So it had, they have the most Greek people and the highest percentage of Greek. You get the idea. It's the yeah. most Greek mm -hmm. city in, in America. Now, Lake Worth, the city that I'm in as we speak, Lake Worth, Florida, which is, it is Palm Beach. Palm Beach is separated from the mainland by Lake Worth. So Lake Worth is the lake that separates Palm Beach from West Palm Beach. I'm in Lake Worth right now. Lake Worth is, as it says right there, the Finnish capital of the world outside of Finland. Whoa. So the Finnish people after World War II came here by the thousands and at one point in time it had the most Finnish people in the world outside of Finland and so today I think it's somewhere in Europe has has like the most Finns outside of Finland but still Lake Worth has the most Finnish it's the most Finnish city in America and it says right there um, an another Another one that I had that Boca, I didn't send you. Boca Raton. That's where I was born, is Boca Raton. Hmm. I'm Bach. Just saying, Bach. Oh, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Raton. Yeah. <laughs> wow. I never thought about those. but uh, I mean, you never know. It may be. This, that's the problem with symbolism and etymology. It's like, it could be, but it may be off. <laughs> mm -hmm. So that Lake Worth, Lantana, and Lantana, I believe, comes from Atlantana, Atlanta, Atlantis. Mm -hmm. The Lantana was a tribe, I believe, a Lantana tribe down here. But, um, yeah, there you go. Yeah. So the Finnish people have probably been here before, in my opinion, and return to this point like salmon returning to their spawning ground subconsciously the finnish people came here to kind of check out their colony see where their ancestors were and they don't even know it and <laughs> we also have a lot of hungarian people here and hungarians are the closest people to the finnish linguistically mm. and the only reason they're separated today is finland's up here hungary's down here the hun came through and chopped their culture in half pretty much right so the owner the owner of the store that that my brother and i um run right now he was hungarian he's still alive he's hungarian and he moved here down to south florida too so it's not just the finnish people he moved to lake worth too and if you walk down lake worth there's finnish stores finnish this finnish that so oh, wow that's incredible this has really tied a lot of things together 
I looked up uh, the story. I looked up Boca Raton. It says the city's name comes from Boca de Ratones, a Spanish term term meaning yeah. rat's mouth. Rat. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that appeared on early maps and referred to hidden sharp points and rocks that nod or fretted ships cables. Mm-hmm. Wow. Wow. Yeah. So you're right. Yeah, that we were taught that growing up in school. It's actually. If you know Spanish, it's actually the mouth of the mouse, because mm-hmm. rat, raton means mouse, and mm-hmm. the word for rat is different, if I'm not mistaken. Rata, yeah. Rata. So it's like the mouth rat. of the mouse. To eat. Um, yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Doctor um, Narco Longo. What the mouse? Yeah, come one, on. Is the mouse a uh, constellation or anything? <laughs> no, but. The craziest thing about Florida, if I had to say it in 10 seconds, is the whole state is ruled by the sign of Pisces. Pisces is ruled by three planets, Jupiter, Neptune, and Venus. You would have to be astrologer. You'd have to be an astrologer to know. Florida has three cities named after planets, Jupiter, Neptune, and Venus. So the ancient people back then knew it because they made all of their temple and mound and pyramid arrangements they plotted them mm-hmm. to the constellation pisces pisces yeah. comes from poseidon because pisces is um the fish it's the sea serpent the whale the sea monster they're the last sign of the zodiac aries mm-hmm. is the first um blah 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 yeah, yeah. but Dr. This Narco was great, man. Strikes again. One more thing. So, <laughs> nar- narco, nar. I'm a nar, right? I, I like to think, I like to think that I'm uh, holding up my end of being a nar, like the nar, the narrator. in the what's, old. So. What's the longo, bro? What's so long? <laughs> Is that a dick joke when you did yeah. that? Narco Longo? Yeah. I mean, we are talking box <laughs> No, that was my, uh, that was my uh, government. My shill. They gave me a name of shill names to choose from, and I chose oh, cool. uh, Narco Longo. Fucking disinfo <laughs> agent. Well, there you go. Hey, hey Juan, I, I heard your, uh, your other episode uh, with, uh, what's her name? Carla? And, uh, Slip Carla, Dissident. Yeah. And uh, th- there's a lot of connections there to this too, uh, the the ten kingdoms and the three, the three crowns, that has to do with the, oh, the yeah. three northern, three Caucasian uh, races, yeah, and then the ten tropical kingdoms, interesting, um, or the Moorish kingdoms. Mm-hmm. This is nuts, man. We're broadening this. We're like ripping open lost and stolen history now rather than just peeking through the curtains, mm-hmm. it feels like. <laughs> yeah, you're not yeah. Maybe Tom I'm anymore. being too <laughs> poetic about it, but that's what it feels like. Well, you can find me at the Hold On Podcast, and you guys can play Yeah, you stuff. can find me at the Deep Share on all the socials. Um, hit me up, contact at thedeepshare.com. It was really no, nice to meet you, man. From the ashes. Rising from the ashes. Check it out. Awesome. Um, yeah, thanks, guys. It was nice meeting you too. You too as well. Um, yes. Y'all have each other's info. You guys can hit each other yeah. up, and we gotta do oh. this again. And yeah, thanks. it should be fun to pick each other's brains more. <laughs> mm-hmm. Thanks, mm-hmm. thanks, Juan. Yeah, Juan. yeah, for yeah sure. thank you, Juan. Yeah. Appreciate yeah, thanks, it. Juan. I'll send all of you the you file. Bet. So, okay, please cool. do. Yeah, for sure. All right. Take care, everybody. Have a good night, guys. Later. Later. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Deep Share Podcast. If you want to hear more, then hit that subscribe button. Follow me on all the social places. And remember, think for yourself, but don't always believe what you think. Till next time. Human sacrifice, dogs and cats living together, pacifaria. Enough, I get the point. <laughs> you have meddled with the primal forces of nature. <laughs> and you will attend.
Someone else knows, okay? Ha! 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 Ha!